Hey everyone, this is Joseph from StartDataEngineering.com. In this video, I want to talk about a few techniques that you could use to master window functions in SQL. As always, if you'd like to follow this along in the blog format, I'll leave the link in the description below. So let's get started. For this video, we'll be using a clickstream table as an example. As a standard clickstream table, you have your event IDs, the user who's logged into our, let's say, e-commerce app and their session ID and the action that they are performing, it can be like login, click, buy, log out, etc. And the data I'm created representing when this event was created. So let's say we want to order events per user session. What that means is per user ID and session ID combination, we want to order events as one, two, three, four, etc. depending on the reverse chronological order. How do we do this? So pause the video and take some time to think about how you would do this. Okay, so now let's see how to actually do this using window functions. So we're going to use a function called row number, but I would also recommend looking at rank or dense rank depending on your needs. Um, we define a partition which defines the subset of the rows over which we want to apply this function and order by which orders the rows within that partition. So here we are ordering by date I'm created in reverse chronological order. So let's look at what partition by does. So you can think of partition by as actually creating these windows within your entire data set. And you can define partition based on one or more columns. And the order by orders the rows within that partition. In our example, we are ordering by date I'm created in reverse chronological order. The last one is a row number. It is a inbuilt uh, window function which you could use to just number your records one, two, three, etc. within a specific partition. Again, if you'd like to follow this along in the blog format, the link is in the description below. The blog contains code examples you can follow along. So let's look at the next key concept of lead and lag. Let's say you want to access a record from a previous row or a column's value from a previous row, you could use lag and you could use lead to get a value from the next row. So let's see how we can do that. So let's say you wanna get the next event's time of occurrence and the previous event's time of occurrence. So you, what you could do is you could partition by user ID and session ID. So we are operating with per session and you can order by date and create it in ascending order. And if you use lead, it will get the next row defined by that order, which will give us the next events time. And similarly, you can use lag to get the previous events time. So if you look at the output and assume we are looking at this single window or single partition of one user ID and thousand session ID, you can see how we are using lead to get the next rows data and created values and how we are using lag to get the previous rows data and created values. So this is how you can use lead and lag. The next concept to look at is rolling windows. Let's say you want to calculate rolling minimum, rolling maximum, rolling average across a rolling window of events. You could use rolling window. In our use case, let's say you want to calculate the rolling number of by events that ha happened within the past five events across all user events. Let's see how that can be done. So we use something called a conditional case here, which will default, which will set to one if the action is a buy, else zero, and we sum that. And we specify an over clause. Note that we are not using a partition here. We could partition, but in this use case, we are not partitioning because we want a running count across all events, across all users and sessions. The key thing to note here is five preceding and one preceding. The preceding denotes the number of rows before the current row. So if you say five preceding, it's five rows before the current row. And because we are using a between, it'll calculate this sum for the five rows, from five rows before the current row and one row before the current row. So let's look at how it behaves. So if you consider this user ID set one and session ID 90 row, you will see that the box represents the window, which is five preceding to one preceding. 
and it sums the number of buy events within that window and writes it to the number of purchases with all the current row. The final thing to be aware of is performance concern. Window functions are great, but sometimes they are expensive compared to doing a group by or subquery or derived, derived queries. So what you could do is you could use uh, explain to get the total cost and see if the corresponding non-window function explain is lower in cost compared to the explain as compared to the window function. If it is, uh, use the non-window function one. Again, this depends on your use case. Hope this gives you an idea of what window functions are, how to use them, when to use them, and how to determine their performance. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below or leave them, ask them in my blog. If you like this video or learn something from it, please consider liking this video, sharing, subscribing, tweeting, sharing on Facebook, all the social media stuff. It really helps out with the ranking algorithms. Thank you.